Welcome to St John's Boulder on Pentecost Sunday and the Queen's Platinum Jubilee weekend. Our service today celebrates both of these events. The reading is for Pentecost and some of the music is for the Jubilee, while the prayers relate to both. The sermon, too, looks for a link between these two great festive occasions. So let joy fill our hearts, because in this troubled world of ours there remains much to celebrate, give thanks for, and rejoice in. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which was given unto us. Let us humbly confess our sins before Almighty God. O God, God, our, our Father, Father, we have, have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed. We, we have not loved thee with all our heart, we have, have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. ourselves. Have mercy upon us, we beseech thee, cleanse us from our sins, and help us to overcome our faults, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission from all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open now our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
reading is written in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors of Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker Maker of heaven and earth, earth, and And in in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. God, who at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by the sending them to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, we give thee thanks for the reign of thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and for the example of loving and faithful service which she has shown among us. Help us to follow her example of dedication and to commit our lives to you and to one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, and whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. God of power, may the boldness of your Holy Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your Holy Spirit lead us. May the gifts of your Holy Spirit be our goal and our strength, now and always. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of thy name and the good of thy church and people. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, as holy fire, and burn in us. Come as holy wind, and cleanse us within. Come as holy light, and lead us in the darkness. Come as holy truth, and dispel our ignorance. Come as holy power, and enable our weakness. Come as holy life, and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us, until we are set free from the service of ourselves to be thy servants to the world. O God, who provides for your people by your power and rules over them in love, vouchsafe so to bless your servant, our Queen, that under her this nation may be wisely governed, and that the Church may serve you in all godly quietness. And grant that she, being devoted to you with her whole heart, and persevering in good works unto the end, may by your guidance come to your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Be mindful, Lord God, of all who stand in need of your great tenderness of heart. First and foremost, Elizabeth, our Queen. And also, for all for whom our prayers have been asked. Leslie Boyd, June Fleming, David Holman, Barbara Loweth, Sally Moon, Tony Partington, Mel Porter, Christine Potter, Geoffrey Tridgaskis, Kate, Johnny, Paul and William. You are support and comfort for the aged, the help of the helpless, the cure of the incurable sick, the hope of the hopeless, the saviour of the tempest tossed, the haven of those that sail, and the God and Father of our Lord and friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is nothing wrong. There's nothing stupid. There's nothing irrational or absurd about being a monarchist. Watching politicians bow or curtsy to a head of state profoundly gratifies that instinct in us, or in most of us, that delights to see the humble exalted and the mighty torn from their seats. Little wonder that egotistical tyrants like Hitler, Stalin and Mussolini despised monarchy and that Mussolini abolished it. Thoughtful monarchists are not just fossilised authoritarians only too glad that to view their monarch as the summit of a hierarchical society, nor do they relish the monarchy for the mumbo-jumbo as a mere Gilbert and Sullivan-style sideshow. Rather, with considered seriousness, they see monarchy as a valuable a necessary focus for non-political allegiance to their nation. No matter how much we revere democracy, totally unfettered and unconstrained power and authority can't be left entirely to the will and whim of the people. For the majority can be as vilely and brutally wrong as any individual and are as likely to elect Robert Mugabe Vladimir Putin um, or Bongbong bon Marcos as Angela Merkel, Barack Obama or Volodymyr Zelensky. No, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing stupid. There's nothing irrational or absurd about being a monarchist. Nor is there anything wrong, nor is there anything stupid, nor is there anything irrational or absurd about being a Christian. To see the humble exalted and the mighty torn from their seats is an instinct that is profoundly gratified by a village non-entity, a paltry, peripatetic storyteller, a lover and supporter of publicans and sinners, a condemned criminal dying on a gibbet, effectively subverting questioning, challenging power and the powerful, wealth and the wealthy, and upturning conventional values to offer sacrificing love as life's raison d'etre, not just in theory, but in fact, indeed, in the flesh, on a cross. Serious Christians are not Christians out of fear of death or fear of hellfire, or for a desire that black be white and for miracles to answer life's conundrums, nor for a crutch to limp through life on. Come off it. We take on our faith because it enhances life, is a bracing challenge to give the finger to selfishness and self-aggrandizement and to shoulder instead the cross of sacrificing love as a worthwhile burden to be born with courage, panache, and love for the sake of others. In my first parish in Australia many, many years ago, I sat next to a lady at a church function whose opening conversational gambit was to ask me in all seriousness what my views were on the size of Sarah Ferguson's bottom. Of course, I had no views on the matter, nor interest in the size, shape or provenance of her backside. Royal gossip, tittle-tattle, biography scandal, good news or bad news are of little interest to most serious monarchists. It's the institution that matters as a safety switch to unfettered democracy, as a focus for non-political allegiance to one's nation. There will be good, bad and indifferent monarchs, as with all of humankind. So what? Who cares? Not me. But those we elect as politicians, so prone to God Almightiness, are better off with someone 
they're compelled to defer to. However, there is one exception, a notable exception, to my own indifference to the character and personality of a monarch. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. She, somehow, has managed to get under my skin and into my heart. When we sing the national anthem, and she, in all her frailty, comes inevitably to mind, so too does a lump to my throat. I don't know her personally, nor do I read tattle about her, and yet I do love and admire her. For she's been around all of my life, sufficient to permeate my indifference. And I know her to be what she seems, the epitome of all I hold dear, a servant queen, like Jesus, a servant king. Today is Pentecost Sunday, Witch Sunday, Holy Spirit Sunday. God, the King of Kings, gets under our skin and into our hearts, first and foremost as one of us, in the person of the intriguing Jesus of Nazareth, about whom we know so very, very little, and yet sufficient to permeate our beings, to admire and love as the epitome of all we hold dear. And then, on leaving us, we know him in spirit, Pentecost's Holy Spirit, as presence, God's presence deep, deep, deep within us, urging us on to love and goodness and light and joy. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, we are enabled to be good, live and loving Christians. Inspired by Queen Elizabeth II, we are enabled to be good, live and loving citizens. And when, shortly, we sing the national anthem, if tears fill our eyes and a lump our throat, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing stupid, there's nothing irrational or absurd about us. It's just that we're we deeply love and admire her, as we should. God bless her.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.